Hello everyone and welcome back to medical speaking class. This is Dr. Wing Chan from VitMD.net. Oh, today we are talking about GI, gastrointestinal or gastroenterologies. And the doctors dealing with GI patients called gastroenterologists and you should know this name. Some of those gastroenterologists, they subspecialize further in just liver, they call hepatologists. Now, in this module, I like you to focus on history taking with patients. Your communication skill is crucial in GI system because a lot of GI issue will be resolved simply by history. Okay, so let's start it. Now, in this module, I like you to know a couple basic things about GI. The most common one that many Vietnamese patients and probably you do have called GERD heartburn. If anyone present with heartburn, you should think about what GERD symptom or is it esophageal spasm, esophagitis, or inflammation of the esophagus. Now, inflammation you can develop up to infection or other type of issue. It could be to um, MSK problems, it could be to trauma, but heartburn is something that's so simple and you should know how to. Uh, make a diagnosis, how to work up from a uh, heartburn, okay? One of our main focus in GI we call abdominal pain. Now in this module, you will present a lot of abdominal pain issues and I like you to recommend a couple emergency abdominal pain in GI modules. Now, let's talk about the uh, upper GI first because we like to divide the GI between upper or lower. Now the acute upper GI can cause pain. You think about gastroenteritis, uh, peptic ulcer disease, pancreatitis, cholecystitis, or biliary colic. Uh, this is a pain after meals on the right upper quadrants. And of course, non-GI problem can present with abdominal pain, such as an acute MI, myocardial infarctions. Uh, pneumonia sometimes can cause abdominal pain. So you should know how to work up and abdominal, think about pneumonia, think about cataract also. So between acute abdominal pain, we think about, now there could be chronic abdominal pain. The chronic, the most common one you know is GERD, and this is epigastric, usually it radiate upward under sternum. It make patient worse when they lay down. So ask them about symptom at night. Um, do you feel more pain when at night? especially if it's any dry cough. Now you feel better in the morning when you sit up because obviously the reflux acid going down. Um, the other one is non also um, dyspepsia. Uh, this is likely due to epigastric and usually it better works with food. You should think about all the mesenteric abdominal ischemia as your differential diagnosis for abdominal pain. So think about that and then we think that chronic of the upper GI, you should have inflammatory bowel disease. This is a very famous one, even though many of Vietnamese patients don't have, but you are going to become an international doctor. So you should know about Crohn disease, you should know about ulcerative colitis. So those are the terms that you should know when you think about GI. Now, one big part in the abdomen here, you're also concerned about cancer, right? So think about all the type of abdominal cancer, like any red flag for anosia, weight loss, epigastric, persistent nausea, vomiting, uh, and pancreatic cancer, the key thing is weight loss, epigastric pain radiate to the back, and persisting and progressive, and liver cancer, biliary cancer, colon cancer, all type of GI cancer can happen. Okay, so when patient present with abdominal pain and have been chronic, I mean, usually more than six weeks or two months, you should think about all the causes and cancer as one of the one, especially if patient drinking, smoking, and the elderly. Okay, now I like to um, make sure you know a couple other acute GI issue. Uh, one thing, whenever you see adults acute issue, you should work up faster, either in the emergency room or send the patient to the ED. Uh, one of them is acute uh, bowel obstruction. Uh, usually nausea, vomiting, decrease, platus, abdominal extension, those kind of symptoms, and the pain, the pain 
come in waves, come up and down like this. Uh, that vertical liters is the inflammation of that vertical losses in the uh, colons. Uh, of course, appendicitis, uh, it starts in the umbilicus and then radiates on, on the lower quadrants, fever, nausea, um, anorexia. So those are the things that you should know as general doctors. Of course, one thing you should not miss is abdominal aorta aneurysm. We talked about this case a couple times ago, but if anyone presents with abdominal pulsating mass, and then you feel like it radiates your back, and then blood pressure is dropping, think about that, something vascular. Of course, hernia is another thing. And then think about renal stone, think about simple UTI can cause that. Now, if any female in the reproductive age present with abdominal pain, you should always think about ectopic pregnancy. Whether it's upper or lower, you should think about it. And of course, you will order a pregnancy test, right? So uh, those are the things when you ask about abdominal pain. Now, one of the things patients present to see you, not just abdominal pain or hurtment, they think about difficulty swallow. You should add them whether solid or liquid because that can tell you a little bit about what's the natural history. Make sure patient have any history of stroke or even the new stroke can cause that. Um, any mechanical problem with chewing, swallowing, and believe it or not, GI exam include a teeth exam. Make sure you know how to look for molar, premolar, some basic about you're not a dentist. Come on. But at least you should know some junior gingivitis. You should know some dangerous missing place. If there's a missing tooth, you should see that. And that uh, will give you some idea about chewing capacity if the patient can eat and can choose their food. Um, and then when they have problems with swollen, think about systemically. Start from top, go down to the pharynx, and go down to the upper part of the esophagus, go down, and then think about what is the mechanism. And then you can figure out, and based on history, you can tell whether it's a key on context. All right, um, the other major topic in the abdominal uh, issue is nausea or vomiting. You should distinguish the two. Nausea as a feeling, and sometimes nausea can very non-specific. Okay, anyone with stroke or any hemorrhage or any type of thing can cause nausea, but vomiting is more a little bit more specific to GI. And the thing is, whenever it's vomit, let push thing out. So GI is a very smart system. If they don't like food, they just want to get it out. And how? Either you get it by upper a vomit, or you lower by diarrhea, right? So think about it. If you are GI and you don't like the food, what would you do? You just kick them out. So think about that. And then again, systemically, if any problem with gastric emptying, so after the food go to the stomach, it should move forward to small intestine. Any problem with that? Again, if the patient older, think about pregnant. No, sorry, think about malignancy. And of course, any type of inflammation or infection I told you earlier can cause nausea and vomiting. So the differential diagnosis for nausea and vomiting is a very broad one, and it asks you to focus a lot on history. Now. One other major uh, thing about GI is jaundice, jaundice coloration of the skin. Oh, well, if you see jaundice patient, you you will not ever forget because they look really yellow. They do. They look like yellow. Um, so think about it. It usually due to hepatobiliary tree and disease because they fail to excrete contracted bilirubin. Okay, and sometimes it's done in a common bile that a kill in the rate of a cause can cause that. And other issue with the duct, any type of pancreatic cancer can cause that. So think about it. if this is jaundice, think systemically go upward and figure out where is the obstruction of the duct. And it could be as simple as the gallstone, as complicated as cancer. Of course, hemolysis can cause jaundice too. Think about that. And then, we be, believe it or not, beta-carotene overdose can cause that. So if a patient taking too much 
uh, beta carotene, they can have jaundice, they can have skin. The one of the last part of GI that I like you to know and patient may present it to you very frequently is they have black or tarry stool. Well, whenever a patient told you they have black or tarry stool, you still think about GI bleed. And usually this is due to GI upper one. Well, I said usually because there's always exception. But also in the upper one, varices, gastritis, esophagitis, anything that create bleeding up here. And then when they go on down, they has been processed. And that's why patients have black stool. If you see a brain red, likely due to the lower or more proximal to the anus, rather than far away or distant, like black or tarry stool. So think about it. But anything involved with blood, you are likely to need a scope either from below, we call colonoscopy, or upper, we call EGD. So either way, you need to look at the stomach, the small intestine, and then the colon. Well, so the last part of that uh, is quite common that people usually forget or they not talk a lot, it's con constipation. Believe it or not, a lot, a lot of people with uh, normal function, healthy, they still constipate it. So constipation is, a, is such a complex process that involves many factors, but uh, if you can divide it by just four or five major ones. Okay, functional, functional is the most common one that usually healthy people problem is they have lower fiber diet and they eat not a lot of vegetable and then either then they have a lot of protein and then the diet is not equal. And now not only that they also not have a normal regular bowel um, habit. A lot of times professionals like us we, we like to travel like to go and we like to go to restroom but guess what I'm busy so what will do tomorrow so over time you create a, a bad habit for you and believe it or not when you constipate it over time it can cause all the issue and not just simple com uh, constipation uh, because the, the body try to reabsorb and the, all the ways it can make a strong impact on your health um, the other thing obstruction of course can cause uh, constipation so there's obstruction, think about distal cancer, any type of stru structural issue, uh, fecal impactions, and then metabolic endocrine can cause constipation, absolutely, like hypothyroidism, hypercalcemia, um, and then hypo or hyperkalemia can cause that. Diabetes, neurologist um, uh, issue can cause constipation, such as spinal cord problem. Uh, sometimes they trauma, urinary incontinence, low extremity weakness, those can also impact to your um, GI by a damage to the CNS system. All right, and lastly, medication. Remember medication, medication, narcotics, very famous, or anticholinergic can cause constipation. So think about that, those are the most very common ones. Um, and then, if you think about constipation, think about diarrhea, right? So diarrhea, you can divide more on the structural part, on inflammatory disorder. Uh, but anyway, diarrhea and constipation, you should add together uh, because whenever there's a symptom combined, constipation and diarrhea, uh, you should think about um, irritable bowel disease. So those are the um, main focus when you see patient with um, abdominal or GI issue and make sure you do a, a full checkup from the top to the bottom and a rectal exam usually runs if patient present with low abdominal and for a female a rectal or pelvic exam is needed uh, but you should explain to your patient careful uh, when you exam because um, there are sensitive areas and you want the patient to feel comfortable. Well, the assignment for this week, um, I'm sure you saw, and we post specific cases, and you follow up, and we play a role doctor and patients. In this module, I like you to uh, focus on history taking, like I told you, those are key history when patient present with. And I hope uh, you will remember, because this is not a lot, 
and that's pretty much about GI. Ok, I see you in class. Chào các bạn, đây là tuần thứ 12 của lớp Medical Speaking Fit MD. Trong các cái module này, tôi muốn các bạn nhớ một vài điểm rất quan trọng khi các bạn hỏi bệnh về hệ tiêu hóa. Một trong những điểm quan trọng đầu tiên là phải hỏi chi tiết về đồ ăn. À, hỏi chi tiết về những triệu chứng, tại vì phần lớn bệnh tiêu hóa có thể bắt đầu bằng những triệu chứng rất là không rõ ràng. Tôi nói ví dụ, à, buồn nôn, nhưng mà ối mửa, hoặc là giảm cân, hoặc là hơi mệt. À, thường thường, những triệu chứng này không có rõ ràng, thành ra các bạn phải hỏi bệnh rất là kỹ và phân biệt. Thứ nhất là bệnh cấp hay là bệnh kinh niên bằng cách đó các bạn sẽ ru các bạn sẽ phân biệt ra những cái loại bệnh và khi mà bệnh cấp hay bệnh kinh niên rồi các bạn đã chia ra ở phần trên hay là phần dưới thì mà ứng với mỗi phần trên hay là ứng với mỗi phần dưới chúng ta có những cái bệnh ở giữa chúng ta có những cái bệnh và đây là chúng tôi muốn hướng dẫn muốn dạy cho các bạn tại vì chỉ có tập trung ở một cái phần như vậy chúng ta suy nghĩ ra nó sẽ dễ hơn là các bạn cứ đón lung tung là nó có thể cái này có thể cái này và tôi nói trong phần tiếng Anh tôi chia ra uh, khá là nhiều cái chủ loại cơ bản của GI ví dụ về heartburn, uh, về đau bụng, rồi về uh, phần trên như thế nào, phần dưới như thế nào Hy vọng là các bạn hiểu và học những cái từ mà tôi vừa nói Tại vì đây là những từ chuyên khoa mà khi các bạn nói chuyện với những, những bác sĩ khác các bạn nên biết Ok, uh, cảm ơn và gặp lại các bạn trong những cái môi trường kế tiếp